What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Fitness Business University podcast. Uh, I am in uh, the middle of recording a large amount of episodes uh, that are not just to me. And here's why. And I've explained this on every episode, and I'll do it on this one, too. Uh, 1,774 emails come into my inbox every morning asking me if they can be a guest on my podcast. And it's usually someone that has uh, something to sell, um, you know, all kinds of uh, lubrication oils, all kinds of all kinds of crazy stuff that people like to sell to fitness entrepreneurs. Um, and I said, Hey, you know, um, I would love to have you on my show, but I just can't because I have people like Noam Tamir that are going to get on the show first. So that's what I've been doing. I have been bringing the uh, SPF mastermind members that have had lots of success in the last year and several years um, to tell their stories. Uh, and that's really the purpose of this series of episodes in December is to share um, uh, stories with uh, with you, the gym owner listening to this, uh, so you can get inspired by other gym owners that are kicking ass and doing really well. And so I'm very excited to have Noam or Noam has, as he uh, so uh, pl politely corrects me as, but Noam has been a mastermind member for a very long time. Noam, you, you've you been, you know, if you look back to some of the old SPF mastermind pictures, you're in them, you're in them. So you, you're one of the oldest members um, that, uh, we've got, and you know, I, like Noam, you are kind of like a little bit of a bottle of red wine. Like you just kind of keep getting better every year. You're just, you really have made us very, very proud with the amount of progress that you have, you have made. Um, and the amount of tough love that you've accepted from me. Uh, lots of tough years. love. So oh, lots yeah. of tough love. Yeah. Um, but, but Noam, Welcome to the show. Your first it's day an honor to on be the here. FBU podcast. There you go. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, so I guess I'll start off just tell you like a little bit about myself and how I got started. So uh, I own a fitness studio called TS Fitness in New York City. I've uh, been around for 2000, uh, since 2011. Um, TS stands for Together Stronger. And we're on the Upper East Side of you know New York City, one of the probably the most competitive markets. And uh, Big reason why I'm still here is because of this guy here, Vince, uh, you know, helped me navigate through COVID, through personal struggles in the beginning, and really, um, you know, making sure that I just, you know, just keep moving forward. So I started in the fitness industry in 2001. So I'm like a dinosaur uh, mm. by a lot of standards. Yeah, before and, me. Um, yeah, even before you. Vince. One year, one year before Yeah. Me. So I always thought I was going to get into the hotel business, got my master's degree in hotel uh, hospitality, and then started becoming a trainer, really loved it. I was always into fitness, always into sports, and decided to become a personal trainer. My mom freaked out, was like, oh my God, you're doing <laughs> what? Uh, but um, but they, they became not only huge supporters, but they became clients of mine. And that was, that was you know, huge for me. They've been able to do so much because of the fitness training that they do with one of my trainers three times a week, virtually. And they've been doing that for years. So it's great to be able to give back to them through the business. And uh, I went through the whole process in the big box gyms of building a team. I was a personal training manager. Um, you know, I was, um, you know, worked through that for a number of years and then decided to build my own business. Uh, and was independent for a while and then decided to open up uh, a studio. Almost opened up with a partner, which I'm so happy that I didn't um, because it is, I've seen it in the, in the mastermind. It's really tough to, to navigate with a partner. And I've had TS Fitness through that. Uh, and we've always been doing small group training uh, almost since the beginning, you know, the mm -hmm. semi-private style training. So it's been great to see that process moved forward with a lot of other gym owners in the mastermind group it felt like I was, I was on track and that I was, you know, building a business that was sustainable. So that was great. Um, so you started in 2011. Uh, were you in the same location that you started now or have you moved at all? No, I was not. I, I moved into a bigger location three blocks away. I uh, took over a space of a gym that did not succeed. My lease was almost up. 
and I made a seamless transition. I just got really, really lucky. Um, and like a lot of business owners, when you move into a bigger space, you have a lot more expenses. And so um, that was definitely something that was really, really difficult for me to manage on my own. Uh, I had the yeah. team of trainers and I do not like numbers. And Vince's best friend, Michael Waldron, was introduced to me through a fellow peer. And I remember when Michael was telling me about Vince, I had a totally different vision of who Vince was. Mm -hmm. I was thinking this slick guy, you know, this guy that was like, you know, just, just, you know, I don't remember. But then, but then I met Vince and I was like, and he was so authentic. I mean, I remember you, you know, doing the, 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 the mass, the seminar, you know, the, the, the seminar that you do and, um, and just being so authentic and just saying how much you fucked up. And for me, that was like a, a breath of fresh air because I had bought so much stuff and not used it and then sold it. And, you know, like we said a little earlier, I love the shiny red objects. And, yeah. uh, and, and one of the biggest things that you guys have done for me is pull me away from that and focus on the task at hand. So that's been, that's been really helpful. You know, you well, always I, say, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I, I think the story you're, you're referring to is uh, I used to, when I would have those seminars at my gym, I, I used to uh, tell stories about all the pieces of equipment that, that I would buy. And I bought a, you know, a belt squat and a reverse hyper and not that those are bad pieces of equipment, but I just was like, buying stuff because I was like a trainer junkie and wanted to have every piece of equipment and I wasn't treating my business um, like like a systematized process. I was just like a trainer buying stuff and had some money and then spent it. So, um, and it's funny, I think that everyone resonates with that. Everyone resonates with, you know, you're, you're a coach and you're excited about the training process. But I think as you grow into a business owner, you start to understand that the things you buy and the decisions you make are investments. Right. And you want to invest in things that are going to get a return. And Mike Waldron, who you mentioned, is my, you know, best friend. And anytime I want to buy something and he always asks me, he's like, well, what's the return on this? What are we going to get, you know, from this? And if it's like something silly, it's I was like you, you can't it's hard to justify it to Waldron. And it's like we call Waldron. He's the professor of harsh reality. He's just like he speaks in fact. He does not speak in any type of anything except fact and numbers. And you can't like you can't emotionally justify um, the, the the conversations that you have with him because he's just uh, it's but yeah he's great. So I, I totally forgot that he introduced you um, to yeah. Me. yeah 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 oh, and, that's great. And he's so and, yeah and so you joined me back from a lot of uh, a lot of joined, bad decisions. Yeah you so you joined Mastermind uh, you did the seminar at my gym and then you joined Mastermind what year did you join I don't. Um, must have been like 2000 and remember i took like a, a little bit of time off right after covid but quickly realized that i needed to come back um i would say like probably like 2017 2018 it's been like yeah. four or five years since yeah I've been yeah you. so you've been in, you've yeah. in the group in a while um so um but let's let's kind of fast forward like you know you've had this you know good growth trajectory you made it through COVID, you're one of the few New York City gym owners. And I thought you did a great job during COVID as well. Um, that was a really tough spot to be in New York City during COVID. Really tough. I mean, we all had it tough, but you had it tougher than most. Um, talk about, you know, where the business, you know, was when you started and and where is the business today? Where are we sitting today? So it's interesting because we're, we're doing our, you know, annual planning. So I dove into my numbers a little bit and I was... I was in shock when I dove into these numbers. I mean, in 2011, I was at negative $45,000. I mean, I paid myself a salary and everything like that, but the business itself was at negative $45,000. And now, right now to date, and we're probably going to have more profit than this, we're at a positive cash flow of $160,000 nice. on top of Great. the salary. Um, so it's, I mean, the difference has been incredible. Um, yeah, the cool. amount of, 
revenue that's coming in. And also, hey, listen, we're still dealing with COVID too in New York City. I mean, you're still seeing it, you know, pop up now. Uh, we're seeing a lot of people whose rents are going up dramatically because people got like really good deals during COVID because the city was basically empty. A million people moved out of the city. Yeah. And now people are jacking up rents. And what's been good is that our churn rate has not really changed that much. And a lot of it has to do with the great environment and culture that I've built and the things that I've learned from you guys, um, which has been great. And one of the most impactful things, um, and we'll, I guess we'll talk about this a little later, is the building up of playbooks. And that's something I wanted to talk about because for a while I was like, every time that there was a new marketing thing, I'd be like, okay, you know, start from scratch, here we go. And now the building of playbooks, we're starting to get into like repeat occurrences of, of doing the same events. And they have really, really helped me with, um, with being able to execute. And, and basically like, if you don't know what a playbook is, a playbook is basically a start to finish of like a, a marketing project. The emails that we send out, the time of year that we do it, the, um, the text that we send out, the um, the things that we do for internal and external marketing and how we reach people. Was it successful? What were the percentages of opens? How many people joined? What was the revenue of that? Um, did we do any paid partnerships or marketing? Um, so, so that has been really, really good because I've always had an issue with doing challenges and running challenges. And now I don't anymore because it's kind of laid out for me. So that is something that's really been super useful for us. Um, and yeah. uh, I think the playbook thing is huge because um, it, and I push everyone to create these and do these because we create good marketing plays, right? But then we don't do it again. And it's just like, I think, I don't know why, but, you know, we get bored or whatever. But um, the, one of the things I learned early on is that, you know, the value of the business is in the marketing assets that you create, right? There's no value in your proprietary training system and your A1, A2 and your B1, B2. Like everyone does that stuff and there's no money in that. Um, but there's money in you being able to put out a campaign that that creates revenue, you know, immediately. So I think that's what Noam's talking about. He's talking about this documented process in this playbook for each of your campaigns so if you whether you have bring a friend week if you do a six-week challenge um if you do a sweepstakes all these things that we teach um having these documented playbooks are huge and then what you do is you when you have a marketing person you could they come in and they can take those playbooks and it's like all right here's it's like it's like creating recipes it's kind of like what it is it's like you have a restaurant it's like all right here's the recipe for for you know um you know uh, how to make the biscuits Right. And it's just like, here it is. This is how you do it. And all of a sudden you're making good biscuits every time, no matter who the chef is. Um, so yeah, that's, um, that's one thing I know that you've done really well. What's, what's something else, Noam? Cause I want you to share with the audience um, and the listeners of, you know, you've had great success. You survived COVID in New York city. Um, you're, you're profiting, you know, on top of a really, I know you, I know you pay yourself well, uh, and then you're profiting on top of that um, 160,000, which ain't, you know, so it's like you're running a real successful business. Um, so what, where, where are you at with, um, uh, give, give us some, give us some more nuggets. No. Well. Sure. Um, well, one thing we kind of spoke about, this is something again, that tends to happen with a lot of business owners is that you get attracted to, to trying a bunch of different things instead of really focusing on one thing. And a lot of people want to expand before they're ready. And one thing that has definitely helped me, um, and you, you say this quote a lot by Steve Jobs, is that he said he was just as proud of the things that uh, we didn't do uh, as, as much of the things that we, we did do. And you guys have had to pull me back a number of times from wanting to take on a second floor in my building to, um, you know, re most recently, uh, a guy who his business is basically ending from, you know, joining him and subleasing from him. So I think a lot of us, what we end up doing is we have some success and then we end up saying, okay, I can do this, you know, at another location. And it's 
you know, four times as hard to do it in another location. So um, I've realized to put kind of all my focus on my business and try to generate uh, revenue from there. Um, what I've also started doing, and I know that we spoke about um, trying to go into doing some type of program like Grit, um, but it got me thinking a little bit more about the people that are coming into my gym and how we can start filling up some of those earlier time slots. And we get a lot of teachers in my studio and we get a lot of brides to be as well and, and nurses and things like that because of the hospitals. And what we started doing is creating a, like a, a basically a, a playbook and a um, brag book of couples that we've helped prepare for their wedding. And most recently we've been able to um, uh, partner with a bridal shop and be able to start working with some of their staff. And now when they're selling a bridal gown, they are now also putting in front of them uh, one of our brochures as well. And we've nice. been getting a number of leads from that. So that's been really, really good for us. Um, so generating different types of, uh, of JVs has been really good. We, we have a, a JV with a, a place called Restore that now about three of the staff members come here and, and train. We, we, we do it as a comp and they've been bringing in a number of people that are, that are coming in um, that care about wellness and that are our type of target demographic. So the JVs has been really, really helpful for us. Yeah, that's great. Now the joint ventures are huge. Um, so you, you have one with a bridal shower, you have one with restore. Um, that's who else have you had JVs with um, in the city? I mean, I would imagine there's so, I mean, cause there's so many, I've been to your, your facility and there's just like, you know, within one mile, there's just like yeah. an endless amount of. We have a JV. We're on the website for Bloomberg. Bloomberg has their headquarters, uh, one of their offices right next to us. Um, it's a lot of red tape with a big corporation like that, though, but yeah. we continually kind of work with them. Uh, and then also we have Memorial Sloan Kettering, which is a hospital mm -hmm. right by yeah. us. So we have we had a we had a right before COVID, we had an incredible connection to the head of human resources, um, which now we're actually starting back up with. So we kind of offering them a deal. We have a, a lot of our flyers uh, with QR codes in local businesses, local shops, which has been great. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, the biggest, one of the biggest things that's really helped us um, is our, our, basically our team culture. You know, the, the way that our team is, the way that we kind of communicate with one another, the way that we, um, we kind of have our, our meetings are really important. They're high energy. Um, Devin Gage, you know, been mentioned, I'm sure a lot in this, uh, in, in yeah. this uh, podcast. He came uh, to one of, he presented in one of the uh, masterminds and he was talking about celebrations and how to celebrate members and how to clap it up and everything like that. And we do that now in our meetings and our meetings are so much better. They're so like, there's just so much more engaging and we've gotten some of the, you know, your people. Um, we had big Tom come in and speak to us. We had Kyle Newell come in and speak to us. So that just brings the team together so much more and letting them become very authentic uh, has really helped with our team uh, and, and member retention and our referral. It, it was really interesting to tell you the truth our referrals have shot up so much higher recently. And I think a lot of that has to do with the type of team that we have and, and just the unity that we have with one another. Yeah. I know you have a couple of your staff members that have been, been involved in the SPF um, mastermind. I think you brought one of your, your head trainer to one of the meetings. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, so it's creating, so your advice is, to people listening, create playbooks for your marketing. Um, say no more often, right? Um, yeah. You know, don't have that shiny object syndrome. You know, and I and I part of my job is when I get on the phone with with, with gym owners. One of my biggest things is I just and they come to me with an opportunity air quotes. 
um, most of the time I'm going to try and talk them out of it and tell them that's a really bad freaking idea and you shouldn't do it. Uh, like I probably 99% of the time say that it's very, very rare. That's like, Oh yeah, that's yeah, you should go do that. Um, uh, because most of the time it's just a distraction to what the main goal is. And so I know we've had that talks with you and you've always done a great job. So that's number two is, uh, saying no. And number three is building out uh, a solid team culture through leading team meetings and everything um, like that, that you just mentioned. So that's, that's a, I think those are three really solid takeaways that the gym owner should listening to this um, should really take, take to heart. I have one last one actually. Uh, So my last one, and I think that this is something that's really not utilized. And you and I have spoken about this a lot, which is becoming an authority, but being published in, you know, big, big, um, you know, magazines, online magazines. And I think that a lot of business owners who are certified personal trainers don't seize this opportunity enough because there's so much information that's being pumped out there. Uh, and it really is a simple reaching out to people who, you, the, the authors, you know, find the people, let's say you see a, a, a piece that's written on mobility and you want to contribute, find, you, you'll see the author's name, try to find them on Instagram, try to find them on Twitter, reach out to them, tell them that you're a certified personal trainer uh, and a business owner, and that you'd like to be featured in Shape Magazine, in, um, you know, Men's Health, whatever it may be. Even if obviously somebody doesn't respond to you, keep going, keep on doing it because there's so many of my members now that come up to me and say, hey, I saw you featured on this. Hey, I saw you featured on that. We actually have been getting a lot of traction from people um, uh, Googling, you know, personal training helps with SEO dramatically. Like if you were to Google right now, uh, ideal workout week, you'll see a Shape Magazine article that I was featured in probably about... It was a while ago, but I think they, they they revamped it, but I'm featured in that. And, and you know how many people are probably trying to work out, like find out what's the best thing for me to do to get the best results, you know, each week. And that increases your authority. And I think that's underutilized a lot. And I think that it also, you use backlinks, you know, you should definitely have the features on your website and that increases your SEO. And, you know, Will loves that stuff. You know, um, yeah, your yeah, SEO is Will huge. Always, Will always says that Noam has the best website in in the world because of because of his the amount of traffic that you get uh, uh, to your website is like gaudy. Yeah, yeah. We Google personal trainer NYC, and I'm on the front page, which wow. yeah, which is great. I mean, speaks volumes about what you know SPF Digital is doing, which I can't I can't recommend uh, enough. Uh, but, but yeah, that goes I'm into, not, I guess, not, yeah. I'm not supposed to mention kiss marketing, um, because the, the people at kiss marketing told me that they have a, now a 40 person wait list because I mentioned it on the Devin Gage podcast. <laughs> so I'm getting hate mail from That's the people taboo. At KISS marketing, um, <laughs> about mentioning them on the podcast. So, um, please, if you're listening to this and you need ads run or a website, do not go to kissmarketing.net. Do not, I repeat, do not go to kissmarketing.net. They will not be able to take you on as a client. They will put you on a waiting list that's so long, you won't even be able to. So if you do need websites and you do need a ads run, do not, do not go to kissmarketing.net for whatever reason. Um, I'm sure there's other agencies <laughs> out there that can help you, but don't use that one. Love it. Love it. Well, I'm happy I was able to put that plug in. Um, And uh, yeah, so, you know, just, just, I guess in closing, I mean, this has been the best year of my business ever. Um, I am training two to three sessions by choice just to keep myself out there. And, and so that members see my, my, my face, but I'm not, I'm barely doing any, any sessions, just creating a lot of content, which I'm sure, you know, I know that you, you preach plenty about. And I think that's one of the biggest things is becoming an owner is you become a content creator and that's really a writer. And, uh, and 
you know, I'm excited for, for what's to come. It's just going to be, I mean, I can't recommend it enough to people. I have seen people who I've suggested this to not do it and they're going under or they have gone under already. And, you know, it's, it's, it's challenging, I think, for, for, for gym owners to kind of, you know, reveal that they need help in business. But I think that everybody needs coaching. I think that coaching is, is, is so important, especially as a business owner. So, and, and Vince, you have a, an incredible um, just approach, business, team, everything. The, the, the owners that are in the group, I mean, that's the, one of the biggest takeaways is all the people that you have kind of brought together. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Noam. And I appreciate that. And one, I'd just like to say, I'm proud of you. You've done a tremendous job. As I said, you're like a glass of red wine that you just keep. And I mean that, you know, wholeheartedly, you just keep getting better and better and better as a gym owner. Um, you've taken feedback, you've taken tough feedback and you've run with it and you've made really positive changes to your company. And it shows, it shows that you're doing well and other people are going under uh, in that New York City tough market. Um, so if you would like to join Noam, he gave his little spiel there. If you would like to join Noam in the SPF uh, Mastermind, there's a link in the show notes for you to book a call uh, with us and chat with us about your entry in the SPF Mastermind. So um, Noam, I am grateful for you. I appreciate you coming on the show and thank you for sharing uh, some of those good nuggets. We'll put a, an outline of that in the show notes. And uh, this was a great episode. Thank you so much, Noam. Thank you for having me, Vince. Really appreciate it.